Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So, I don't know about you, but ever since I got into film photography, I've always been on the lookout for whatever film sucks out there that I can try. Ooh, Kodak Color VR1000 that expired before I was born? Add to cart. I guess I'm just not one of those photographers who would like to stick to one film stock. Now, of course, I still have some go-to film stock like Lomography Color Negative 800 or Fujifilm Pro 400H. However, I noticed that I refrain from using the same film stock consecutively. Maybe I'm indecisive AF, but I would say that I'm the type who like to switch things up every now and then, depending on how I want to portray my subject, the lighting situation, and just how I'm feeling in general. I also like to try different film stocks just to see how I feel about them personally. Earlier this year, I got a hold of a few Kodak Color Plus 200, which is one of the cheaper color negative film stocks that Kodak offers. This film stock is actually quite hard to get a hold of where I live. I had to order it online and it's frequently out of stock in online stores such as B&H and Downtown Cameras. So even if I've been dabbling with film photography for quite a while now, it's only this year that I got to try this film. Now, I must say, even if it's a cheap film that uses an old emulsion formula from the 80s, it's still a very capable film that renders images that are vibrant but not overwhelmingly saturated, and it has a hint of that warm vintage flair that reminds me of my childhood photos. Back in March, I went out with my friends David and Bianca to visit Marda Loop here in Calgary. It was quite a sunny day, so I thought it would be a good time to take photos using Kodak Color Plus. I busted out my old Minolta X700 as my choice of camera and paired it with my Minolta MD 50mm f1.7 lens. Here's a montage of the photos that I took that day. Oh my god, they're face masks. Uh, yes. I thought they're like tiny <laughs> bags. <laughs> tiny bags, yeah. So hilarious. <laughs> well now you know what to do with your old mask on. <laughs>
So far, I really like the results that I get using Coda Color Plus. I really like how Punch 8 renders warm tones like yellows and oranges, while keeping blues realistic yet vibrant. And from what I can see, it also renders skin tones really well, with a good blending of pink tones and yellow tones. It would be great to try this film on different skin tones though, because I was only able to try it with my friends who both have lighter skin tones. This film really shines in bright light though, I mean, obviously because of the 200 ISO. All of the photos that I've shown so far were taken with ISO 100 and metered for the shadows. Indoor lighting might look a bit greenish with this film stock, so keep that in mind if you're using it indoors. And with that, I can't really say if there's any downside to this film. I guess you can say that the 200 ISO could limit its use, but given how cheap and capable it is, I'd say you can't go wrong with it. I think it's a good film for everyday documentation, travel, and street photography. Try it yourself. If you've already tried this film stock before, I'd love to hear your thoughts and experience in the comment section down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? <laughs> Let me know. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers!